How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Damien here, back at Blue Collar. All right, intro, check it off, okay? We're, we're there. Brakes on this bad boy right here. We're gonna do both rears, okay? Keep one, listen, all right? Take notes. Keep one on, so you know what you're looking for, all right? When you go to put this back together, it's like a puzzle, all right? You don't wanna take the puzzle part and forget how to put it back together. So we're gonna work on this one first. This is the passenger side rear, and I got a whole bunch of parts here from Rock Auto, and I'm not gonna have the part, part numbers, but it was online. Uh, if you guys wanna look it up, Rock Auto is really easy. You get on there, type in your make and model, really, really simple. You go to what you're looking for, you type in brakes, okay? Say you need brake shoes, boom, they're underneath the brakes. Say you need springs and, uh, and a rebuild kit for these things. They're under brakes. Well, how about how about the little self adjuster here? Guess what? They're under brakes. So I got all this stuff here for you guys. Um, we got the tool that I'm going to be using here. Doesn't matter the brand. It's Snap On. Who cares? Um, but that's what we're going to be using. And lo and behold, I found some extra stuff in this truck the other day. Me and my dad were taking the seat out, and we found where somebody already did this. So, it, it could be either good or bad. I'm going with bad because when I took the brake housing off the rear passenger side before, it was destroyed. So, hopefully the front end, it ain't that bad. Um, but we're going to have to take that off and look once we get done with the rear. Um, I did a few things while you guys were gone here. So, I fixed up this door. Right here, I put two nails in the top, cut off the bottom, made it to where it's not so flappy and stuff like that. And it opens perfect, shut, semi-perfect. It'll, you know, it needs a shim or whatever, but that's been take care, taken care of. Second thing is the seat here. It's gone, all right? I tore up all the floor matting and stuff. It's real brittle. It's, I don't know, no, I don't know. It's not floor matting anymore. This is a third thing that we're gonna take care of hint hint and uh i got the passenger side door to open finally uh we had to spray it with wd-40 and hit it with you know a pry bar and some craziness we got it to open that's the important stuff so with all that out of the out of the way let me go ahead and get started on these brakes um i think i'm gonna put one together show you guys i put it together because you know that's how i do it for now and uh, then I'm going to get into how you can do it and save some time. Um, but I want to do that after I do it because, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, enough talking. Let's get to work. All right. I got all this new fancy stuff put on here. And uh, I hit the brakes. Nothing moved. So I came up here to look at the master cylinder, which I've known was bad for a while, but didn't want to do anything with. And I... Uh, took the cap off here and uh yeah it don't look too good but we're gonna pop this line off here and attempt to clean it out so i'll be back when we're back all right it's the following day of course you can tell because i told you but master cylinder's out of here all right i uh tried yesterday rejuvenating it helping it move you know uh it it was stuck bad all right, that's what I'm saying. Um, I'll show you that in a second. You already saw that I got passenger side rear on that one done. Today I'm going to be working on driver's side rear, and then we're going to work our way to the front. Um, now, my wife, like I said yesterday, I think I said yesterday, uh, is going to be picking up a new master cylinder, which I wanted to get a rebuild kit, but... They cost $20 more for a rebuild kit, and they come in a week later than just buying a brand new one that comes in today. So, went ahead and got a new one, and I'm also going to have uh, something else being brought. I forgot what it is. 8090, that's what it is. I'm going to get some 8090, and we're going to finally put some gear oil in the rear axle and the transmission. Um, I went over a few forms and stuff for the D100 sweep side or whatever they call it. Uh, they say you can use 
80 straight, 90 straight, or some sort of weird uh, transmission fluid substance for the transmission. And then, of course, you have uh, the same thing for the rear, except the transmission fluid. Um, I'm just going to use 8090. I, I don't know. I feel like it's the best of both worlds. It has an 80 and it has an ID, and they said you can put it in there, so I'm just going to do that. Now, I'm going to take you in here. There was a master cylinder we were working on yesterday, and we pressurized it and tried to explode it, and uh, it looks horrible. I don't know if you can see in there, uh, but it's, it's bad, and we had to uh, knock the piston and everything out here, which this is the internals. This seal was completely busted, which goes in the front here. And look how brittle this stuff is. I mean, it just falls apart in your hand. It's crazy. Um, a lot of this stuff was broken and mangled. And then I had to get a, a brass um, punch to punch the whole thing out because it was just froze solid. So uh, I think the best thing we can do is just get a new one. Um, out here when we were taking it off yesterday... I'm going to show you this, but I'm going to pretend I didn't see it. Because uh, this goes into the uh, master cylinder, the very front. And then this piece screws on to the fitting for the hose here, right? Now, it is cracked right there. Pretty good, you know? But like I said... I didn't see it. I'm going to put some of that, you know, pipe tape or whatever the heck they call it. Thread tape, sure. Put some of that on there. Don't mind the uh, stuff here, you know. It's a, a rag. Anyways. Yeah. I'm going to get to these rear brakes here and then we're going to have to wait on the master cylinder and stuff because she doesn't get off till after 7. But here's what we're going to be doing. Like I said, we're going to be taking apart this old stuff, putting new stuff on it. Uh, and I uh, found out last night watching a bit of a vice group video uh, that you can use these for those fancy little, you know, holder inner clippy deals right there. I'm going to see how that works. Yesterday when I did all this stuff, it was relatively simple. Uh, like I said, you can use this side or whichever side you didn't take apart as a reference. But... Um, Two springs in the top, you got this little holder downy dill right here, and you got the spring that comes around underneath to another piece down here that holds something, it does a spring thing, and then there's your little, you know, inner and outer dilly doodab and all that stuff. It's pretty simple, alright? As long as you know what the parts name are, you know, the doodab and dilly and stuff, holder in it, you know what I'm getting at. Anyways, we're going to get this taken care of. I'm going to put the tires back on it. I'm not planning on doing anything crazy because I still have to, you know, bleed them and stuff like that. Uh, but I want the tires back on here so I can drop to the rear and then get up to the front and start doing those too. So um, I think that's enough talking. I pretty much went over everything from yesterday. And now I'm going to go ahead and get into this. Uh, I got my tools here. I'm going to be using a vice grit. And then, of course, you saw this yesterday. Now, yesterday, I did it with just this tool. So you can do it with just this. But this little, you see this little tab here on the side? It, I, am I using it wrong? I don't know. But I stick it right there, just like that. Push it in, twist, and it should come out. But it ain't hanging on nothing. So what I'm going to do is get the vice grip, clamp it around here, push it in, twist it, pull it off. It's a lot easier, and I don't have the right tool, but I'm going to do what I can. And then, the, of course, this hooks onto the spring, and then you can take this little clamp, or this little jaw piece here, put it on the side of these brake shoes somewhere, clamp it down, and then that spring will come out, and you'll let it go, and it'll release all that stuff. And uh, I'm going to be doing new hardware with a lot of this stuff. I really should have got a new wheel cylinder, but I'm just too afraid to take them off there. I don't want to break any lines. But you'll take those springs off there. They'll let it loose a little bit. And then, like I said, these will have to come off. And then this little inner outer brake adjuster thing 
will have to come off and then all of it will just fall off and then you'll be like oh my god how do I put it back together and they clamp back on there and they'll do it one piece at a time until it comes together so uh that's what I'm going with I'm probably going to try to set up my tripod in just a second just to show you guys what I'm talking about here and uh once I get done with this one I think this is the only one I'm going to show you because every single one of these is pretty much the same. They have small little things that are different, but uh, every one of them are pretty much the same. So I'm going to get that set up for you guys, um, show you how I'm going to be doing it. I know it's probably not the right way, but it's how it's going to get done. So let's stop talking. Let me go get this tripod and then we'll get to it. All right, we're all set up. Tripod engaged. I think my first order of business is actually taking these things off here on the top. Can we do it that way? I don't think we're going to get this thing to hang on to nothing, so I guess I will use the vice grip, maybe. I'm not really worried about bending these things, because uh, I have the new hardware. But, uh, just in case something winds up breaking or something, I wouldn't bend every single one of them. You know what I'm saying? They lose their longevity. If you bend them all the time. Let's see if they can hang on to this one with this little thing. Oh, now hang on to it. There we go. Hang on to it again. Whoa. You'd think they'd make it to where these will work, you know? But I don't think it's working. Maybe I'm using them wrong or something. This ain't gonna fly off here going 10 million miles an hour. Pull it out. Perfect. Bent this one too, but it's not that big of a deal. We'll put it back in here and bend it back down. So, perfect, now this will come off, well, this will come off of here, like that, like that need to, I think. And this has a little hook down here, if I could slide it off of there. See this little hook here, it just hooks into that piece down there. And of course you got this that'll come off. And we're down deep there, I'm sure. I don't know, there's another spring down there. I'm gonna try to grab it. Hopefully I'm not in the way here. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera, but you guys are just in the way. Okay. So of course you got this piece here, which this cable will just kinda clip into and then you got another spring on the bottom this one here that'll clip into it as well like that okay I'll hang on to those but now we gotta take these retainer springy clippy whatever's out Forget about your adjuster down here. Okay. Adjuster goes right here. That shit just runs. Sorry, I'm glad there we go. Let's 
system. No. I don't know what that is. Wasn't on the other side. That's scary. That's probably for the parking brake, if I would assume, right? Which the other side didn't have one, so parking brake probably don't work on that side. Which is sad. That is so much easier than trying to use this little tool thing. Because let me tell you, the tool thing don't work. You can tell that these are getting pretty hot and stuff. And they're all dirty and nasty and everything. And i got to get this clip off here. Oh, heaven forbid. You actually come off there. Probably had to take some sort of hammer or something on it or whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, that's how you take it off and putting it back together is just the opposite of that. It's a little bit harder, but uh, the key things that you would really need to keep, like if you just bought a, bought a spring set, you're gonna want the adjuster, this little like a I guess a tent like a. I don't know. It's a bar with a spring. Whatever the hell they want to call it. You're going to want to keep this still on the bottom. This where that cable rides. You're going to want this too. And obviously the cable. All the other stuff you can change. If you didn't want to change the springs, you can keep those too. Um, it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you just change the springs. But <clears throat> once I get this stuff put back on here... Uh, I'm gonna be spraying it down before I put the hubs on. And when you put the <clears throat> when you put the brake housing on there, you're gonna to want to adjust that to where the brake housing just kind of slides on there. It's not super easy, but it's not super hard either. I'll show you guys what I mean in a minute. Uh, but that is pretty much how you would disassemble it. I don't think I'm gonna get into the reassembly because I think it's gonna take a lot longer to show you guys this stuff. But like I said, it's fairly simple, and it's the same way uh, putting it back on. So it's just reverse, all right? Um, let me get to putting this stuff back on here. I'm going to figure out how to take this off here real quick. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll be set up pretty good. All right, so I changed my mind. I am going to show you. Why would you make a break video if you didn't show somebody, all right? So you're going to find on the brake shoe here where this little cutout is, right? That cutout slides right in there, okay? It's on both sides, so you can't mess up the placement of these things, right? So, you're going to want to find that to begin with just to make sure you know where your pads are going to be oriented on this thing, right? And when you get these springs, you're going to need, in the kit, you can buy one kit off rock auto that'll give you two sets of springs so you can do one kit for two sides right one large spring on the bottom two smaller springs on the top and it comes with these little clamps or this little clip that holds a parking brake uh, actuator lever thing on there you got your two springs the two dills on top of them and those are those little uh, spring adjustment things on the side here that just hold the shoe on there personally I like to put these in there first um, just to hold the pad on there so I can move it around after that so I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it um, and then after that you know once you see how it goes on there you can pretty much do it any way you want whatever way you're comfortable with okay so when you when you get this stuff it's going to come in pieces, right? You're going to get the spring, you're going to get this little top piece, and you're just going to press it down, and it'll click just like that. I don't know if you heard it. It'll click into place, and then this slides through the back, right here. Let's do there, okay? 
You're gonna put your brake hook or shoe on there through that. Slide this on there. Push, twist, and it's in place. You have to make sure that uh, this little head has a little beveled piece on it. You have to make sure you slide it through here. Comes in this way. Twist so it won't come back out. Alright. So. Alright. So this is what I'm talking about. You're going to want this head of it turned where it's in the piece right there. Okay. Um, this is how I got it set up for now. And like I said I want to do this with the other side. Just to get them up here for you to mess with. Just make sure that when you slide this in here. It sets in a little groove. See how this one has that groove here. Make sure it's set in the shoe all right because you don't want to have to take that off because it takes forever to put on there for some reason if you don't have the right stuff or if it's been a while you know so make sure you get that put on there and uh do the same with the other side now the other side's a little different because remember we have this little parking brake lever actuator deal all right you don't have to put that on there so i'm gonna go ahead and throw it on the shoe real quick it's gonna here's the shoe okay it's gonna be on the back side and this little this little deal right here is going to slide through that hole. And then you're going to get one of these brand new clips. This one right here. And clip it down. Alright. And then once that's set in place, you're going to take this little hook here. Slide it just right in there. Okay. And that just sets in there. Alright. That's all you got to do for that. Then you can slide the shoe back on there and it's in place. All right, here's the other side. The clip's in there. This little spring's in there, too. Now, like I said, make sure you get that in there right. But whenever you're trying to put this metal piece on that cable, um, it has those little prongs like this, right? And what you're going to do is pull that spring back a little bit to where you can see the cable. Slide it in there. Turn it around and pull it this way. And it'll sit in there just like that. It'll go up, okay? There's no other way it should be able to go on there and actually be able to put the shoe on. Um, I couldn't really show it because every time I try to put down something and do something else, it would come off of there. But um, there's the spring. It goes right back in there to that clip, okay? And it just sits in there like that. So pull the spring back. Or you can see the little wire cable whatever clip it in there and you're good now uh, like I said you have this spring that goes on the bottom here just like so and then you have spring here and spring there now of course you're gonna have a cable on that little um, spacer thing to keep everything pushed back and then you're going to have the cable come here to a little C thing, come down this way, another little deal, cooking all sorts of craziness. You'll see that in a minute. But that is, it's slowly coming together. Um, let me uh, get this cable and stuff on here and I'll show you what that looks like. Also, before I forget, don't forget to put that in there like I just did. I'm glad I saw it when I did, but pull the shoe back, pull the shoe back, kind of fit it in there. It'll sit just right in here. Don't forget it. All right, like I did. Okay. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Spring is in here. Spring is in here. These are lined up. That's in here. Okay. Only thing we have left is this spring on the bottom here. Okay. We have this, which sets in between the shoes it needs to be adjusted a little bit this thing has to be so dirty that it doesn't even know how to operate anymore anyways this should sit in here like so like that and you're gonna have this see that little tab here the little hook it goes in this big hole on the side, like so. so. It should look like that. And then you have this hook 
that sits right in there. And then, of course, that spring also sits in there. Now, to the bad news. One, I smashed the Jesus out of my finger here. And uh, two, I broke my tool. Of course, I didn't need it because this thing just does not work, you know. So, uh, I went to using the old vice grip and that's how I got this spring in here. I clamped it here and pulled it and broke my abdomen doing it. But, uh, it's in there now. So, uh, now I'm going to figure out how to get that spring on there and do this and that. And then we're going to throw these housings back on here and, uh, pretend that they're resurfaced. Throw them back on there and see if. Well, I guess we should see if the parking brake works first. Then, we can get into the front brakes. But yeah, it's almost done. Uh, this is pretty much what it's going to look like, just like the other side. But I'm just kind of showing you where everything is. So, I'm going to get this taken care of, and then we're going to put the hubs back on here, make sure they fit on there perfect, and yeah, go from there. All right, real quick. That's how that's supposed to be set up. Okay. All right. We're probably going to wind up having to get into wheel cylinders, but hopefully not. Um, I mean, I'd take it all off and redo it, but hopefully not. These things don't look like they're leaking. I think it was just the axles or the axle shafts. So uh, I'm going to get this hub and kind of play with it a little bit and... We're going to get this thing brought down, but that's how it should look. Just going to let you all know. All right, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to let this parking brake down and pull it back a few times and see if, uh, let's see if it actuates. Okay, well, I got both this little drum housing and the other one put on there. But let me tell you a story real quick. All right. Uh, these, I should say, this one did not want to go on there. And I had to beat the ever-loving Jesus out of this thing to get it on there. And uh, I had to change some stuff around. But... Uh, other one, one, it just slid right on there. It was, it was really weird. Maybe they got the brake shoes a little bit off on the thousands. Uh, I'm not for sure. So this one, it ain't going to spin for nothing. It's pretty much just locked. Okay. We'll take care of that when we have to. This one over here, it'll spin free. No problem. Okay. So my plan is, forget about the other one for now. Put the tires back on here. And get ready to send this thing into Mach 1 million. To make those brakes on this side actually work. Uh, we're just going to burn them off until they decide to work. Or it just explodes at this point. Because it pretty much pissed me off. But other than that. I'm going to throw these tires on real, real quick. And what I want to do is get some of that green slime and shoot in there. Put a little air in it. Okay. Put it on there, spin it, you know, put it in gear, let it have its, you know, fun. And hopefully that green slime will seal all these little air holes around the bead here and fix the brake problem. So, that's my plan. I'm probably going to just do the one wheel, whichever one will spin right now first. And we'll go from there. Was no one going to stop me from doing something absolutely insane? You'd think I'd know this, but I was going to do it anyways. I I don't know if you realize this, but I don't have an 8090 in this thing yet. Uh, and I was about to start and not really drive it, but let him spin. Because uh, this tire here, he ain't going nowhere. Okay, and I was going to try to turn the truck on, put it in gear, and 
just let it have its way. But nobody reminded me that I didn't have any 80-90 in here, and well, a differential doesn't act right. If it, you know, it doesn't wet its lips a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna have to wait on that. Thanks for the reminder for you, those of you that were screaming at me, I know. Uh, anyways, tires are back on it. So here's the plan, new plan, all right? Old one ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have to wait on getting that tire to actually move again. So, I'm gonna let the rear down, and I'm gonna jack the front of this thing up, put it on stands, and we're gonna get to taking that off and see what those brakes look like. And I hope that the person that did them before me did a good job in the front, because uh, after doing the rear, you get really pissed off at, the, at this one. This one right here did it. I really don't want to do the front. I will. I don't mean I want to. But I hope they did a good job. That's all I can say. Anyways, we're going to get the front jacked up. We're going to put it on stands. We're going to do all the fancy stuff. And we're going to have to wait on getting that tire unstuck. And, you know. So, uh, let's get taking this off. We'll probably put the master cylinder in either later tonight or tomorrow probably and go from there all right moment of truth we're gonna have to see if this pop oh that's not gonna that ain't whoa what in tar what is this huh it sounds horrible what is this and how do I get this off? I wonder if you just pry it off. I'll pop this uh, dust cap open for the shit anyways. I need to see the wheel bearings and stuff, I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> Moment of truth in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Be right back. All right, upon further inspection, I don't know how to take this off. Uh, there's a cotter pin that goes through here. You pull it. Behind that is this, behind that is this, behind that is that, and that, and that. Okay? Perfect. It all just sets in there. Um, basically, you pull all the bearing and all that stuff out of there, which I'm going to repack it anyways, but you pull it all out, and then you just kind of shimmy the housing off of there. And uh, it doesn't look horrible. I don't see any crazy leaks, but uh, it, do it is going to get changed. Don't, don't freak out. It's going to get changed. Uh... But I don't see any leaks, I don't see anything crazy with the wheel bearings and stuff like that. And, uh, like this right here, it's just, needs some more, you know, grease in it. That's all it needs. Anyways, I'm gonna get to, uh, taking this stuff apart. This is just like the rear. I'm gonna show it to you real quick. It's two springs in the top with a little loo dab. Of course, this doesn't have the parking brake stuff because the only parking brake stuff is in the rear. And I only have one hooked up because this side was messed up. Um, one spring at the bottom here. And then you have your two little keeper springs right there. Anyways, very simple. I'm just going to pull it, put the shoes on, put the new springs on there. Put it all back together after I, of course, spray it down and clean it a bit. And uh, I'm going to put some new grease and stuff in here and in there. Put it back on there and it should be fine. Um... Once I get to the other side, I'll show you what it looks like over there, and then when it's done, I'll show you that too. We have a leak. Don't freak out, though. It's just old fuel that looks like transmission fluid. It's fine. It's no, no big deal. But uh, let me get this stuff taken care of. I'll be right back. Okay, so took this all apart. I was getting ready to grease all this stuff, and uh, I realized the wheel cylinder um, was a little bit wet around these here and uh they're pretty bad on the inside they're pretty nasty but the thing is although it might look rusted on the outside this stuff is like cast so this stuff rusts really fast on the outside but the inside looks relatively new and i know it's really dirty 
but I'm kind of wondering if I can get a kit to rebuild this or if it'd just be better to just pick two up and fix the two. Uh, I'm not real sure, but uh, I'll have to do some pricing. I just know that this one is leaking when I took it off. So, it's really simple to take these off. There's two bolts. Now this sits in here just like so, right? And there's two bolts right there on the side. See them? The left and right. Then you have your bleeder screw in the middle and then canted to the right on the top here is for that hose. All right. And that's just the, the brake hose right there. That's all it is. I got really lucky that this thing didn't try to explode when I took it apart. Um, but I'm going to have to figure out where to get one of these. Um, so that kind of puts a damper on putting this back together completely. And I'm hoping that the ones in the rear are okay. It didn't look any crazy. They were just rusted out. Okay. Uh, I hope they work. If not, then I'll obviously pull them off and replace them. But I'm hoping that they'll be okay. But this one, I don't think I've ever seen brake fluid go through here. And it's already leaking. So I might as well just buy them. Put them in there. So at least if I put it all back together and the rear don't work, I still got these. So, um... This might shut me down for today. I still kind of want to put the brake master cylinder on there and stuff, but it's just not here yet. So, uh, might have to put this stuff up for now and come tomorrow. I'll be, uh, putting wheel cylinders if I can find them and, uh, the rest of this stuff back together. So, I need to do some calling around. All right. It's currently day three. Uh, midday sure what is this an autobiography or something don't matter we got some parts we got some new problems because of those parts but it's fine i'll talk to you about that in just a second we're gonna get the brake master cylinder taken care of problem who know okay we got the wheel cylinders for each side passenger and driver's side front okay those are expensive and what else do we have we got the 8090 you got a gallon of it that might do us it might not who knows uh and I think that is about it. So, what I need to do is show you a few things, okay? Bear with me. All right, so here's the two wheel cylinders. Of course, we can only afford the Chineseums. Uh, but here's all the numbers off of these things. There's those. There's those. Okay, this is from Advanced. They're 22 a piece, I think. Uh, and here is the first problem, right? This is the brake master cylinder. And as you can tell, it is different from the original one. Now, what I'm gonna try to do to fix this, because getting a single uh, cylinder instead of the two split cylinders, uh, I'm gonna run two lines off the side of it, because it'll be sitting right here, just like this, right? So I'm gonna two, run two lines off the side to this one, I think. So I'm gonna cut this and why it to two lines but I, I gotta mock it up first because i'm not sure if it's gonna have enough clearance between here and there and if not i'm gonna have to do some crazy parts looking up i already know i can get it from o'reilly's uh but it's gonna cost me more money and i really i don't want to get too crazy with it i've already spent a lot of money on it i need to save some money and believe it or not, for some reason, this one's cheaper. So, I'm going to see, I'm going to mock this one up, see if that uh, bore is the same size as that little rod over there. And I'm going to see if we have the clearances. I'm going to start getting into putting the front brakes back together. Well, this side, and then we'll flip the other. And i got to get grease to put on this stuff, which I got in the cab. Then after all that stuff's done, we'll worry about the 8090. Okay? So, let's get to it. All right, real quick on this master cylinder here. Uh, I wanted to show you guys, I forgot. Here's the uh, part information stuff. Okay, pause it if you need, whatever. Uh, it comes with instructions, tell you how to bench bleed it and stuff. I'm just gonna do it on the truck here. But uh, like I said, this bore, this bore looks the same. Um, I'm kind of worried about the uh, hoses over here. I'll show you with my other hand actually here. See the hoses? 
They look like they'll clear in the front for sure, but the rear one might have to finagle. My plan is to take two hoses on those ports, run them down to a Y, like I said, and kind of pull it together. Because the single one, believe it or not, is actually made to withstand all the pressure that's needed to go from front to rear. Now, I was thinking about just running it off one cylinder here. I don't think it's going to have the same amount of pressure as the single. So... I'm going to run it off too. I'm just going to wire it. And we're going to see how that goes. It should be fine. should have the same amount of pressure that it needs. Um, but we'll see. It's like an experiment. If it don't work, I'll just fix it a different way. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to try to tackle this first. Just so when I do put this brake stuff back together, I can actually bleed it and everything right here before switching to the other side and everything. But, at least make it work, I guess. You know? We'll see. But there's the parts information. Um, I think that's about all I can show for now, besides once I put this stuff on here. This stuff's pretty easy. Except for the fact that I'm going to have to find some lines and some fittings and stuff. We'll figure that out. Anyways, I'm going to get to it. Okay, big halt. Hang on. We're not going to do this master cylinder. I don't know. Some of you are saying, thank God. Why would you do that in the first place? Well, you know, sometimes you can't get what you want, but you might find you get what you need. You know what I'm saying? You know the song? All right. Anyways, as much as I wanted to, to use this, I, can, I, just, I can't find the fittings. They're just nowhere to be found. And it's going to take me a million years to cut that, bend it, bend two more, fit it, do all those things. It's not happening, okay? That's what I'm saying. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to look up, because these, okay, this right here, expensive. This over here, not. Guess what? They do the same thing. So uh, I'm going to try to find one of them and see if I can get one of them today. If not, I'm going to have to say, hang on, take this one back. Okay, take it back, so advanced. And uh, I'm going to get to work on these brakes here at the front. And we're going to see when we can get that in sometime. So... Um, it sucks. I really wanted to get it done right now. It seems super simple, but we don't have the fittings for it. So I'm going to call some stores real fast, see if I can get one in today or tomorrow or something crazy. And, uh, we're going to wind up taking that back and finishing these up real fast. So thank you, uh, so much for hanging in there. I've done a lot of talking, not a lot of working, so I'm going to get to it. All right. Going on a brisk walk here, back up to the truck. I just got off the phone with O'Reilly's Advance and AutoZone. And wouldn't you believe it, they wanted 15000 freaking dollars for all this stuff. For good lord's sake, it's it's a master cylinder. It's nothing special, you know. So uh, I did the right thing. and I went to Rock Auto and found it for $30-something dollars. Of course, after shipping, it's like fifty-one forty-nine or something. But if you're looking for a master cylinder for 67 Dodge, or one like it, I go on Rock Auto because uh, O'Reilly's and, and well, O'Reilly's and AutoZone, they want seventy-six something. No, probably around eighty dollars for them. And uh, and Advance don't even carry it. So yeah, I went ahead and got one off Rock Auto. It won't be here till October the third, so that means I'm gonna have to put it on in a later video. So that out of the way, I'm gonna get into these brakes finally. In the front i'm going to start on the passenger side do the driver last okay um i have the wheel cylinders to put on there hopefully we don't have problems like we just did because uh this, it should be simple but it's not so i'm gonna get uh, working on it just to recap from yesterday of course you guys just saw it i took everything off and it's just a little nubbin okay we're gonna fix that don't you worry Got some grease, gonna be packing bearings and stuff. I hope you guys know how to do that. It's real simple, but if not, I'll try to show you. Um, I'm gonna be putting the shoes and the springs and everything back on and get everything set. Once that, this side's done, I'm gonna move over to the uh, driver's side. Well, of course, I'm gonna let this one down. Move over to the driver's side, do the same thing on that side. Then, uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do in this one because the only thing I got left is fluids. I don't know if I'm going to show it or not. It's it's pretty simple. I'm just going to open a bolt, whatever the 
freak they want to call it, throw some fluid in there and call it a day. So I think once I get done with the brakes here, and I'm just going to cut it off, and then you guys are going to get to see this part and listen to me talk the whole time because I didn't really do anything. So thanks. All right, a couple things to note here with this new wheel cylinder, all right? One, it comes coated in some sort of oily substance that gets everywhere. But just like the uh, the old one, it's got everything a little candid, a little uh, bleeder screw, and the two um, threaded holes here for the other bolts that you're going to have to put in it. But it also comes with this little copper end piece that goes on here in between the wheel cylinder and this hose here. See how the old one's on there still? I don't think these were too old. Uh, most of the time, this uh, cast iron stuff rusts really fast. I'm going to try to paint it uh, before I put everything back on there. I'm going to loose fit it, paint it, you know, stuff like that. Now, don't get any paint on this. Okay, don't need no paint on it. But uh, I think I'm going to try painting around here and up in there and all this rusty stuff. I'm going to try to bring it back. I'm not going to do anything crazy. Just kind of paint over it. See if it looks any better. So, um... Uh, I'm going to try to get it done. Probably paint the outside housing of that too. We'll get to that once we kind of put all this stuff back together. Um, I'm not going to be doing any painting in here. What I meant by this was that really. Because like I said, you don't want paint on this. And you know, nobody's going to really see in here when they look at it. But that's beside the point. I don't want any paint getting anywhere near the brakes and stuff like that. So um, my plan here is... I'm going to fit this cylinder in here, just like so. Put the line on there, put the bolts in it, fit it up. And then you're going to need the old um, little rod cap things that come out of here that set on the shoes, wherever those are, right here. You're going to need these to put in there as well. Um, I'm going to go clean them up. And just like the, the rear, put your shoe on, fit it. There's a little C thing. Clip on there, clip on there, do all the things. You already saw the springs and stuff. It's really easy. You only need three. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's a plan. Let's see how we do it. All right. Here we go. We're all new here. Okay. Pad, spring, spring, thingy, tensioner, doodabby. You know the deal. All right. Now my plan is, my hands are about to get all greasy, so I'm not going to be touching my phone. But I'm going to get this grease lathered on here. Then I'm going to take everything out of here, which is like a little, uh, it's not really a castle nut. It's a regular nut with this little dill on top of it, which you put a cotter pin in between the things here. And then you got the wheel bearing, which I'm going to pack. By the way, if you don't know how to do that, take the bearing in one hand, lay your other palm flat, and put some grease in the flat palm of your hand right there in the middle, okay? And take that bearing and just kind of knead it in on your hand until you can see it work the grease from one side of the bearing through the other okay and then once that bearing gets the grease through the other side it's all the way through the where the rollers are then you can uh put grease up in in between it and stuff like that and slide it right back on okay um once that stuff's back on there like i said i'm going to be putting this drum housing back on and uh i'm probably going to try to paint while i'm here and then let everything down and Go to the next side okay well here's what i used to paint and uh i covered all this stuff in here made it look a lot better than it did shot the frame quite a bit made sure to cover up the uh vin serial number i think it's serial number vin but i made sure to cover that up so whoever buys it for me uh they'll have a hard time finding it painted that and everything else and what's up brother i uh just got done, now I gotta let it dry. And uh, put all this stuff up, wait till the next time. Hey, it's the following day. Um, we got the passenger side completed yesterday. Won't be able to get to the brake master cylinder till October the 3rd or somewhere, I ordered it. And I'm not gonna be able to get to this right now. I have to work on a uh, 03 Z71. There's a transfer case issue. I'm not going to be putting it on the YouTubes. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to go ahead and end this video for now. And then uh, I'll show you guys this stuff later. 
But for now, because I'm going to be working on something else, I'm going to go ahead and end this just for the video's sake so I can put it out there so you guys can have something to watch while uh, I get finished with this truck and also start on this one again. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys don't, uh, if you're not already subscribed, I'd, I'd appreciate it. It's not going to hurt you to subscribe or anything. You don't have to owe me any money or anything. I just, uh, I want people to get out here and start watching, you know, have some fun. So f feel free to like and subscribe, share it, you know, whatever you want to do, comment. Tell me what I'm doing that's good. Tell me what I'm doing that's bad. Uh, let me let me know what you guys think about this truck, you know. And, uh, yeah, on the next video, we'll get into some uh, brakes again and master cylinder and then brake tire free, stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate the ones that come back. Those of you that is new, I appreciate you guys for stopping by. If you like it, like I said, tell me. If not, tell me why too. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day.